All right. So once again, you're welcome to the music class today. Last week, we were able to look at um, definition of music and we were able to look at staves, uh, clefs. We were able to, to name lines and spaces on the various clefs. Uh, we said we are, I mean, on the various staves, we said we have four staves. And but we said there are two major common ones, isn't it? So, and uh, we were able to name them. And also I gave us a short exercise, like a form of assignment. And I see that uh, many of us really did well in that assignment. And I'm impressed about that. And that assignment was for you to draw the G and the half stave in, and for you to include middle C. And we have really done well. That's very, very good. So today we want to move on to this topic, which is accidentals. Accidentals. That's what we're moving on to today. Accidentals. Okay. So uh, as the name implies, as the name implies, accidentals. Uh, as the name implies, accidentals, we see that uh, these are signs and signals that occur suddenly in a piece of music. So if you're reading music, for example, um, if you're reading music, let me show you this particular uh, uh, piece. I believe we can see this music piece, isn't it? Can we see this music piece I'm trying to share? This song, it says, in tenderness is sought me. Can you see it? No, sir. No, You sir. cannot see? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Can you still, is it, is it, is it that it is small or you, uh, you just that you can't see? We can't see it, but we're only seeing accidental. Oh, you're only seeing accidental. All right, okay. Um, all right. I was just trying yes. to display to you. Okay. Let me go there now. How is it now? Can you see it now? Yes, we can, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. In yes. tenderness is sought me. Some of you would have re remember this song. In tenderness he sought me, weary and sick with sin. Okay, you remember, and I, I want you to keep the goal of this, of this lecture in mind. Keep the goal of this lecture in mind. Remember that the goal is that by the end of this music class, you will be able to Take a music piece on your own, especially our gospel hymns and songs that we, we use, that we sing, uh, you know, in the, in the church. You should be able to take it up and read all the black notes and the white ones and all these ones and then be able to tell us and then be able to sing the song, you know, without somebody giving you a prior tune to the song. So for you to be able to do that, that means that you must understand the, 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 the way all these notes flow together in terms of the pitch, in terms of the duration, you know. So that's what exactly we're looking at. Now, if you can see uh, my cursor, I'm pointing to a sign here. I'm pointing to a sign here. Can you see what I'm pointing to? Can you see the sign I'm pointing to? Yes, sir. Yes. This yes, sign, sir. this yes, sign sir. in music is called an accidental. So that means that if you will be able to read a music piece and be able to sight sing, you know, as we call it, then you must be able to understand what you call accidentals as well. Okay, so because you will be meeting them along the line. For example, look at it here again. This sign mm. has a, this sign has, there's a reason for this sign. Okay, if you move on again, you're going to see it uh, somewhere here. Look at it again. There's a reason for this sign, okay? So that, those are the signs that we call accidental. Okay, so let's go back to our lecture now. 
Let's go back to our lecture now. So we, we, we're talking about accidentals, and then uh, we'll move on to uh, another aspect also called musical notes, values, and rest. But let's first of all deal with these accidentals. So we said that accidentals are those signals that occur suddenly in a piece of music, okay? Um, uh, they, they either increase a note by a semitone, or they can even increase it by a tone, or they decrease a note by a semitone. All right. So if you meet a sign that we call a sharp, if you meet an accidental that we call a sharp, how many of us can see what I'm pointing at? You can see the sharp sign here, is it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very good. This sharp sign, this sharp sign, it raises a note by a semitone, okay? That's the way it does. So uh, if you're singing a note and then uh, you want to, you want to know whether it's going to be raised by a semitone. You can meet this particular sign beside it. That means you have to raise it by a semitone. Okay. Then if the other accidental is called flat, flat, flat lowers a note by a semitone. Flat lowers a note by a semitone. You can see the, the sign looks like, like a B. Okay. The sign looks like a B. The sign of sharp looks like a, like harsh, isn't it? Like harsh, you know. All right. Then look at the other third one. The third accidental is called natural. Natural. So look at the sign of natural. The sign of natural wants to look like an harsh sign, like sharp, but it's not the same. It's not the same. So you can see the way it is drawn. It's more like you drew an L and then you will now draw another L but inverted. And you now make them to come together. Okay, so the first L goes like this, and then the other one comes down. All right. So, so a natural restores a sharpened or a flat note to its original, uh, to its original pitch. Okay. So now sharp raises a note by semitone. Don't forget that. Flat lowers a tone by a semitone, and lowers a note by a semitone rather. And then a natural restores a sharpened or flat note to its original piece. So it means that if you're singing uh, in, in a magic, uh, you're using a music piece and you meet a sharp, it has already raised the note by a semitone. And as you continue singing, then you meet a natural. That means that if you still see the same note, but now a natural sign is put there, that means that that note is to be restored back to his original pitch, all right? Is to be restored back to his original pitch. That's what it means. Okay, what if it's a double sharp? If it's a double sharp, it's, it will be like a letter X. Look at it, a double sharp. If it's a double sharp, it will be like a letter X. What does it do? It raises a note by two semitones or a tone. You see? you will notice something that if a sharp raises a note by a semitone and then now we have two sharps that means that it has to raise it by two semitones okay so or, or you call it a tone because one semitone and another semitone if they come together they become a full tone all right okay on the contrary double flat is represented by two flat symbols look at the the sign for double flat it lowers a note by two semitones, or even it lowers a note by two semitones, or you can call it, or you can say that it lowers a note by a tone. All right. So when a bar line appears after a sharpened or a flat note, it cancels the pitch effect of the accidental or the previously affected music note. This is what I'm saying. Let me come and explain to you practically now what I'm saying, so that you can understand it better now. Let me explain it to you practically. Let's come back to the music piece I was trying to share with you. Let's come to, um, let's come to this stave. Look at this stave. Are you looking at the screen? Look at this stave. Can you see this sharp sign? Look at this sharp sign. 
this sharp sign is saying that any note on this particular line G, any note on this particular line G, right from this particular point forward, you must raise it by a semitone because that is what this sharp is signifying. It's not only affecting this note here, it's affecting any other note you are going to draw that will still be on line G. Okay, so when you're singing it, you must raise it by a semitone. It will be G, but you must still raise it by a semitone. That's what it's saying. But you will notice that as we're moving on like this, we come to a bar line. We're still going to get to bar line, okay? So you come to this line here, it's called a bar line. As long as this bar line is here like this, even though we drew another note, which is on the G line, this one now cannot be affected anymore by this sharp sign. Why? Because it has met a bar line on the way. A bar line has barricaded it on the way. So that's why it, this sharp cannot affect, the sharp sign here cannot affect this note, although it is still on the G line. But let's say that this note that I'm pointing to here, let's say that this note is not in this particular area, it's now beside or it's in this same bar, it's in this same space or this same section. If it is still here, then it's still gonna affect it, although we not although you may not even see the sharp beside it. But so long that there's a sharp, initial sharp sign that have been put beside uh, a note on the G line, every other note that will be on the G line must be affected by that sharp, except a bar line appears, okay? Or except an accident, um, sorry, except a natural sign is put beside it. Natural restores the note back to the original position. All right, so let's continue now. Let's continue now. So you will see that when a bar line, this is what I'm trying, I was trying to explain majorly. When a bar line appears after a sharpened or a flattened note, it cancels the pitch effect of the accidental on the previously affected music note. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's identify the keys on the piano keyboard now. Uh, the reason why we're going here is that accidentals have a role to play. In order for us to be able to identify the keys on the keyboard. The keyboard has both blight, uh, those black and white keys, isn't it? So how many of us have seen a keyboard before? You've seen a keyboard before? <laughs> Raise up your hand if you have seen a keyboard before. Definitely, I know you must have seen a keyboard before. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yes. So a keyboard has both black and white keys. All right. So how do you understand the name of those keys? Accidentals have a role to play when you want to name the keys on the keyboard. All right. Um, in, in the keyboard, in drawing the keyboard, the keyboard has both, like I said, black and white keys, but it has two sets, two sets of black keys, then three sets of black keys. That's the way it is put. You first of all have a two set of black keys, then three set of black keys, then two set of black keys, then three set of black keys, then two set of black keys, then three set of black keys. That's the way it is normally put. And then, but the white keys will be underneath the black keys. All right, let me teach you how to draw the keyboard. I want you to draw a rectangle. Like I said, I expect you to have a, a small notebook beside you with a pen, although you have the lecture note with you. So I want you to draw a small rectangle. Draw a small rectangle. Okay, have you drawn your rectangle? Draw a small rectangle. Now, divide your rectangle into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Divide it into eight by drawing vertical lines. 
vertical lines, using vertical lines divided into eight divisions. Divide your rectangle into eight divisions. Eight divisions now. I believe you are done now. All right, after you've done that, then name the spaces in between your divisions starting from C. Starting from C. You can start the first space becomes C. Remember in the music alphabet after C, the same thing with the English alphabet. After C, you have D, then you have E, you have F, then G, remember you don't have H, like we did, we, we told ourselves last week, we don't have H in music. So you go to what? You go to A, and then B, and then C. All right, so you have C to C now. Okay. I mean, I think if you are done with your drawing, can you raise up your hand? You're done with your drawing and you've put C to C. I'm seeing two people. You're done with your drawing and you've you've put okay. I'm seeing others. Okay, thank you very much. All right. After you've done that now, draw a small section of another rectangle on the lines that you have used to divide. You will start from the first line. You must be following me and be listening to me. You draw the on the first line alone first. Draw a small rectangle, like I'm pointing on the screen, draw a small rectangle on the first line, like I'm pointing to you, to you on the screen, on the first line that you use to divide the, the rectangle, on the first line, okay? Just draw a small rectangle. If you are done, leave a small space. Draw another rectangle that will fall on the second line. All right, draw another rectangle that will fall on the second line. All right, okay, very good. Now, leave the third line. Leave the third line, don't draw anything on it. Leave the third line, don't draw anything on it. Go to the fourth line now. Go to the fourth line. Go to the fourth line. The fourth line, do the same thing by drawing a small rectangle on the fourth line, like I'm showing on the screen. Then go to the fifth line, draw another rectangle. Then go to the sixth line, draw another rectangle on it. All right. Okay. So the seventh line, leave it, do not draw anything. All right. Okay. Let's name this black keys together. Let's name these black keys together. You see, a black key in front of a white key is already raising the note, is raising the pitch of the note by a semitone. And you remember what we said in the definition of sharps. Let's go back there. Let's go back to the definition of sharps. What did we say a sharp will do? We say it raises, we said it raises a note by a semitone. A sharp raises a note by a semitone. All right. So now let's continue now. Let's go back to the keyboard. So if a sharp raises a note by a semitone, that and we have a black key already that has already raised this note C. Any black key in front of a white key has raised that note by a semitone. Let me say that again. Any black key in front of a white key has already raised that white key by a semitone. So now I want you to name this by yourself. So C, the, the first black key has to become what? C sharp. The first black key has to become C sharp. So I want you to write C sharp. You will write C and you put a harsh sign, a harsh sign, okay? C sharp. All right, let's go to D now. D, look at a black key in front of D as well. And this black key has raised the, the, the white key by a semitone, remember? So that means that 
the name of this black key will be what? D sharp, because it is a sharp that also raises a note by a semitone. So we can just say, all right, it becomes D sharp. All right, let's go to E. E, there is no note here. There is no black key that is raising E by a semitone. So we don't have anything to name. Let's come to F. F, the first black key in front of F is what? F sharp. G, G sharp. A, A sharp. I want you to, to name all those black keys like that. Now for the flats, the flats. Let us start from, of course we cannot start from C because there is no black key behind C. Let's come to D. Let's come to D. Look at D. A black note behind a white key reduces that white key by a semitone. It reduces that the pitch of that white key by a semitone. All right, so if it does that, let's go back to flat. Let's go back to flat. Look at flat. Flat lowers a note by a semitone. And look at the sign for flat. It's like a B, but it's not exactly B. So let's go back to the keyboard. Now, D, the black key behind D, has already lowered the, the D key by a semitone. So it has to be D flat as well. So write a D flat in that first black key. All right, let's go to the second black key. What's it gonna become? E flat. Okay, go to the other black key in front of F. Let's come from G side, okay? Because there's no black key behind F. Let's come from G now. The black key behind G has reduced G by a semitone. So it becomes G flat. The same thing with A flat. The same thing with B flat. All right. So we see now that there are no notes between B and C. And also between E and F, we do not have a note. That means that um, there's no black key in between E and F and also between B and C. They are actually halfway apart, okay? They are halfway apart because let's move from C to D. You will see that it's a full tone. C goes to the black key. It gives us a semitone. It comes down to D, another semitone. So it means that from C to D is a full tone. From D to E is a full tone. From E to F, look at it. There is no halfway here. So that means that from E to F, it's a semitone. Although it's moving, it looks like a full tone, but it's a semitone because you can see we do not have even a, a, a black note in between them, a black key. All right, from F to G is a full tone. Because F to F sharp is a semitone. F sharp to G is a semitone. So from F to G is a full tone. From G to A is a full tone. A to B is a full tone. But B to C is a semitone. All right, let's continue. So therefore, according to the figure above, G sharp is a semitone higher than G. And a semitone lower than A. All right. So you will notice that these black keys, they are having two names altogether. Okay? So it means that C sharp and D, D flat is the same thing. The same thing with A flat and G sharp. They have the same pitch. So in other words, any, any note that has the same pitch, if you have two notes and they have the same pitch, they are called enharmonic notes. Enharmonic notes. Enharmonic notes are notes, they are two different notes with the same pitch. So A flat and G sharp, they are enharmonic notes. Okay? Or you call them enharmonic equivalent. All right. But a distance that is already a full tone 
we consider it as a diatonic, diatonic whole step. Because if you move from C to D now, C to D is a full tone. That's a diatonic whole step. Diatonic whole step. Uh, because it is a full tone, diatonic. Maybe you should look at it in form of two, die. Die means two, mono means one, okay? So a diatonic O step is C to D, D to E. But E to F, is it a diatonic O step? No, it's a diatonic half step because there is no, we're not moving to any semitone in between them. They are the semitones. From E to F is a semitone. It's not a full tone. So it's a diatonic half step from E to F. From F to G is a diatonic O step. From G to A is a diatonic O step. From A to B is a diatonic O step. From, from B to C is a diatonic half step. All right, let's move on. Musical notes, values, and rest. Musical notes, values, and rest. Okay. Um, music notes. You know, I told us three properties of music. How many of you can still remember the three properties of music that we discussed last week? <laughs> now I will see whether you can remember what we discussed last week. B3, you want to tell us? B3, tell us the three properties of music we discussed last week. We have the pitch, volume, and um, frequency. The pitch? the volume and duration and... <laughs> okay come again now let's have you clearly we have the pitch duration and volume okay the pitch the duration and the volume all right um who else want to add to that you want to add to that? Is there anyone who wants to add to that? Okay. So one of the one one of these properties we said is duration, right? Duration will tell you how long a note is. How long is a note? That's what duration will tell you. How long is this note? Okay. So what we're studying now. We're studying that property of music that is called duration, okay? So music notes are the symbols that we denote and tell us how long, you know, a note is. By the way we draw them, we will be able to determine how long they are, okay? Sometimes for us to be able to determine how long they are, we call what we use to measure how long they are beats. You know, or we say they're the value of the notes. So a note can be for, for, for very long, let's say for four beats. Okay. Or another note can be for as short as half beat. It's not even a whole beat now, half beat. Okay. So that's what we're studying here now. Let's look at the various type of notes, okay? The various type of notes. Number one is the breathe. We call it breathe. When you see it, it will be drawn as a round open note in between slashes on either side. Look at it here. I'm pointing to it on the slide. You will draw, if you draw a, a, a whole note, a whole open note now, you know, like a sphere. If you draw like a sphere and you now put two slashes in uh, beside it on the left and on the right, then you have just drawn your, a brief for yourself. You've just drawn a B, a brief. Okay. Let's go to semi-brief. Semi-brief. Semi brief is a round open note. Now there will not be two slashes beside it. <laughs> so can you see the difference now? There will not be two slashes on the left and on the right for the semi brief. 
For the semi brief has four counts. The semi brief has four counts, or you say four beats. While the brief has eight counts or eight beats. Okay. All right. Let's go to minims. Minim. Minim is an open note. Now, minim will have, you will still draw the sphere, but minim will now have a stem. Is that the stem is pointing up or is pointing down? I'm showing it to you here. If you look at my cursor, what I'm cycling now here, you will see the two ways you can write a minim, the two ways you can draw a minim. It's either the stem is pointing up or the stem is pointing down. It has two bits. The count is two bits, okay? So you have to prolong it as for two bits. You know, when you see it like this, it will be open and it will have a stem. Can you try to differentiate the difference now? Can you try to understand the difference now between meaning and semi briefs and brief? Just try to look at it very well. All right, let's go on. Look at the crotchet. Crotchet is a black note with a stem. Now, the, the difference between a crotchet and a minim now is that you will still draw the, the sphere, you will add a stem pointing up or downwards, but now you will shade it black. You're going to shade it, you're going to shade that note. That's a what? A crotchet. Okay, let's go to number five, a quaver. Quaver. A quaver now, it's going to have a small difference again. You will first of all start from the way we used to start. You will draw a sphere. You will shade it. It will have a stem, but something else again. It will have a tail. It will have a tail. So the tail now will be hanging on it. Or you say a flag. You know, it's not looking like a flag. It will hang on the stem, you know. That is now a quiver. It has a half beat, but the crotchet has one beat. Okay. What about semi quiver? Semi quiver has a, you know, semi quiver, you will still start with drawing a sphere. And then, but after drawing the sphere, you will add your stem, you will shed it, but now you have two tails or two flags. All right. So now it's a semi quiver. This one has one over four a quarter bit. Let's go to demi semi quaver. Demi semi quaver. A demi semi quaver will have, you will draw your sphere, you will add the stem, you will shade it, but the stem, the tails now are gonna be three tails or three flags. Okay. This one has one over eight bit. The last one is emi demi semi quaver. Hemi demi semi quiver look at where we're coming from quiver semi quiver demi semi quiver hemi demi semi quiver okay so you draw a sphere you hang a stem and then you will draw four tails don't forget to shade a sphere as well so that's it hemi demi semi quiver it has one over 16 bit so all these notes above, you can call them, let's, call, let's go back up there. Let's go back up there. If we start from, if we start from number two, we can start calling it a hole. If we start from semi-brief, okay? If we start from semi-brief, Sorry, please. If we start from semi-brief, let's start from semi-brief. Semi-brief, you will say it's a whole note, okay? Then, minim will be half. Are you following? Semi-brief is a whole note. It's also called, I'm giving you another name it is called now. Semi-brief is called a whole note. Minim is called a uh, half note. The crotchet is called a quarter. Anytime you see a quarter, 
It's called, it's a crotchet they are referring to. The eighth note, the eighth note is quaver. Then the next one will be the 16th note. The 16th note is semi-quaver. The 32nd, the 32nd is demi-semi-quaver. And the 64th, the 64th is hemi-demi-semi-quaver. Try to match those notes together yourself. Try to match them together yourself. That's just a little activity for yourself, for you. Let's go to the next one, rests. Rest. Rest is a period of silence in music. All right? When we are singing in music, we can get to a point whereby the composer of the song wants you to rest. Okay? It doesn't mean that you go to sleep, obviously. But somebody might be singing now. And then he says, okay, let me bring out something. Let me say, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, you see, those breaks that we're having, and it seems like you're not saying anything there, no matter how short they look to you, those are what we call rest. That's a period of silence in music. And it's very important. Every music note has its own corresponding rest symbol. Okay? For example, a crotchet note has a one beat. Similarly, a crotchet rest has one beat of silence. Let's go back to crotchet. Look at crotchet at number four. Crotchet is a one beat in terms of duration, in terms of how long that note is. If you draw the rest, a crotchet rest, it also have one bit of silence. So the duration of that rest is the same as the duration of the note. All right. So let's, let's look at it here. Look at semi-brief. Look at the semi-brief rest. This is the way the semi-brief rest is drawn. You will draw something like a rectangle after you have drawn that rectangle, you will shade it. And then you will now draw a line, an horizontal line above the rectangle. That's a semi-brief. Can you draw it now? Draw it on your, on your note that you have with you there, in your note. Draw it. This is the way to draw a semi-brief. First of all, draw a rectangle. After you have drawn the rectangle, shade it. Then draw an horizontal line above the rectangle. That's a semi-brief for you there. When you see it in a music piece, it means you will rest for four beats. It means you will rest for four beats. It means you will rest for four beats. Now, look at the minimum. A minimum beat, a minimum rest. A minimum rest, you will rest for two beats. Remember that this is the duration of the minimum note as well. Let's go back there. Minimum. Look at the duration of the minimum note. The duration of the minimum note is two bits, but the minimum rest as well is also two bits. So then let's, for you to draw the minimum rest, you can see the difference between the semi-brief rest and the minimum rest. After drawing the rectangle and shading it, your horizontal line is not above the rectangle this time around, it's below the rectangle. Can you draw your own? Draw your own minimum rest, draw a rectangle, shade it, and then draw an horizontal line below the rectangle. That's a minimum rest for you, two bits. All right, let's go to crotchet. A crotchet is a one bit, a crotchet rest is a one bit rest. You can see the way to draw a crotchet rest is a bit different from how you draw semi brief rest and minimum rest, okay? It's more like you want to draw an S sign, so to say, or uh, how am I going to put, it's like you want to draw a three, but just look at the way it is drawn here and try to learn it. 
okay? That's the way you draw a crochet rest. Okay, let's go back, let's go to quaver rest. A quaver rest with, with a half beat rest. And look at the way it is drawn. Look at the way it is drawn. It's more like as if you, 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 you draw a comma, but the comma is facing up. Then you now flag, you, you, you now stem it down with a stem. You just practically have to look at the way it is drawn here and try to learn. Okay, look at semi quiver. It has two commas hanging to the stem. Demi semi quiver, three commas, I mean, three up converted commas, definitely hanging to the stem. Okay, one over eight bit. Then I mean, demi semi quiver. One over 16 bit rest. Okay, I want us to do a class activity now within the space of five minutes. In a tabular form, in a tabular form, list all the notes, including their names, their shapes, their values, and their rests. In a tabular form, do that in five minutes and I'll get back to you. So, all right, you're welcome back. You're welcome back to the class. Um, I believe some of us would have uh, done our class activity now, that's very good. Um, this is the major assignment that I'm gonna be giving you today. And you need to pay attention so that I can explain to you something that may be difficult for you there, okay? This assignment, the one I gave you the last time, is just for you, to, it's just for me to, 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 it's just for me to give you as a form of exercise, okay? But this one, I'm going to send a recording of your grade to the secretary, you know. So, and she's going to record this, this particular assignment. The one I grade for you the last time, I didn't send into her. Uh, but this one is very important. It will form uh, a part of your assessment. So please, I want you to do it very well. Look at the question number one. Name the notes below. You are given the first three notes for each new clefs as example. You are given the first three notes for each new clefs as examples. Let's look at the first step here. They have already named this note as G, D sharp, and A flat. All right. So you're going to do the same thing for this particular step. You do the same thing for this particular stave. You do the same thing for this particular stave. Remember you have this one on ledger lines here. I believe you should be able to get that. Remember the clef has changed here. You do the same for this particular stave. You do the same for this particular stave. All right. Now, come to this, this particular place. Look at the clef. The clef has changed again, but it is still the same process. You name it, you name it. But don't be surprised if you see that some of the examples are not correct according to your understanding of staves. What I, what I want you to do is to correct the example. Okay, so don't just overlook the example as well. Look at the example critically and be sure that that example is correct. For example, you can come to this one I'm pointing at. The example says this first note is B. This other one is E flat. And this other one is B sharp. You should check that. Because I might be expecting that you will correct the, ex the example here if it's not correct. So please look at that. All right. Now, number two as well. The same thing. Name the notes indicated within the staff. Do not use ledger lines. This time around is the other way around. You are the one to draw the notes now. You are the one to draw the notes, okay? But the notes have been named for you. 
but you have to draw them. Name the notes indicated within the staff. Do not use ledger line. Okay? Does anyone have a question? As we have come to the end of the class today, I want to thank you very much for coming. And I, I believe you have had a wonderful time today. And I'm so glad that you are here. And I believe we've, we, we've really learned a lot. God really bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, the next time will be, I'll be telling you when the next class will be. But don't forget that on Saturday, the next, the, 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 there's going to be a combined assessment where uh, we're going to be examined in a, com in a combined manner. So I want you to get ready for that. You have to read all your notes on the beginning of the class. And I want you to do me proud on that day by making sure that you perform excellently. All right. Thank you very much. God bless you. A question, please. Okay.